thanks Marcus Neiman and working in Stockholm City Hall and I said a quick uh, uh, question. Uh, you mentioned uh, uh, supported employment and that is good from the positive from the economical point of view and you were showing the data with the ratio between uh, spend the dollar and what you get back. Yeah. And I was thinking about uh, uh, what factors you take into consideration. You mentioned uh, taxes and, uh, and uh, uh, factors like that, taxes, income, but uh, do you also look at, uh, for example, when someone gets a better self-esteem, whether that uh, affects, uh, let's say, medication or dependence on alcohol, or maybe that you use your health insurance to a lower extent, or other such factors that might be more difficult to control or how many factors to take into consideration when you make yeah. these calculations? That's brilliant. Um, I, I don't deal with any of that because it's too hard for me. You know, I, I don't know, it's hard to measure self-esteem and you know, how, do I, how do I judge that? You know, I just look at the monetary outcome. But there are some studies that are done in the non-disabled population which I think we can generalize to the disabled population. For example, in the United States, um, people who retire early tend to die sooner. Um, and it's, it's the idea often is people, when they, people retire, they don't have a connection to their community, they don't have a routine that they do over and over again, they, don't, they miss seeing their friends in the work environment, those kinds of things. So it would be really interesting to see if there's a life expectancy extension as a result of working in the community, that you get up and go and do something and you feel a purpose with your life and that you have friends and you know, those kinds of things. My wife used to work in a nursing home. And she would always be able to tell who was going to pass away soon because they kind of give up. They don't go out of their room anymore and go into the, the common room and play uh, cards or do certain things. I think that there's far more to support an employment than just the money aspect of it. I tend to look at this just because it's one of those things that kind of interest me. But you're absolutely right. There's so much more to it than just money. And there's there's nothing more powerful than watching a kid learn something that you didn't think that they could learn. I, I can't explain it. I think some of you probably experienced this, but when you think, oh, God, I'm never gonna, like Don, the guy that was so working in the hospital, I honestly believe that he couldn't do this. And he proved it wrong. And that's not only his, uh, his self-esteem, but it's kind of mine too. I think that we all get some benefit from this that's not measured into this uh, in terms of uh, self-esteem and self-concept and happiness that you can't put a dollar value on. There's just something about working and doing something successfully. And that's important too. I just don't know how to quantify that put into a dollar value. You know, I, I, I don't know. Um, there's a, I, I met with um, oh, what was it, his Senator, uh, he was a comedian on Saturday Night Live, and he's now a senator from Minnesota, uh, not Harkin. Anyway, he, he, he said, well, I don't understand this whole thing about working in the community, because I, I go to sheltered settings, and the kids seem so happy. They seem so happy to be there. And the answer that we kind of brought up is, you can be happy in many, many places, and you can actually learn a living at the same time. So it's not just one or the other. You could be happy and do all the things and build self-esteem in other environments. And I think that that's something that we need to remember. This isn't just an economic argument. That's what I'm presenting. But we're doing something other than just earning a paycheck. We're teaching them about life. We're teaching them about friendships and, and meaning and getting up and doing something. You know, I, I've taken like a semester off of my job and sometimes you know, the alarm goes off and you go, why should I get out of bed? I don't have anything to do, you know? So you need something to get you out of bed. You need something to do, and I think employment is good. It's something that makes us positive. And if you have good coworkers, it gives you a home away from home, too. And that's very important for us to, to focus on. Yes. I'm working together with Inuit in a project mm -hmm. uh, to disseminate good uh, working methods in the municipalities in Sweden. And we found out five municipalities and we also interview, interview the, the workers uh, and uh, I can just underline what you say because what they say is uh, so important that you can get out in a job mm -hmm. as everybody else. Sure. Uh, the money is not all and they also say that it's very important that you have a person you can contact 
when you like, when you need. And also know how to ask in, in, in the job, what, what to do, and uh, things like that. So it's very important. They don't know the name of the method, so they can tell in another way how important it is. Not only the money. <laughs> I've had kids that are nonverbal, but you can tell and the look on their faces that they're happier working than, than not working. There are rates of behavior, uh, misappropriate behavior, like Don hitting himself and biting himself, decreases when they're happy and when they're working and they, they feel like they're part of a community. And you know, it's hard to quantify that, but it's just as important. It's a human right. Yeah, yeah. The question is, how do we facilitate that human right so that most people can enjoy it? You know, and we can only work with so many people. How can we make that more and more and more? And how can we make it so that they keep their job longer or get the job that they want? You know, I can get anybody a job. I can put them in a job and then they get fired because that's not what they want to do. The question is how do we get them a job that they want and will do well and be happy with? That, you know, that's the bottom line. Related to this question, uh, do you find it hard to, to discuss with a politician uh, if it's not about economic, it's more like value, meaning, meaningfulness of life, and things like that? Uh, I don't even t talk to them about it. I, I try to just answer their questions. I try not to sell them anything, and they, always, they hear from both sides about, like for example, the sheltered people will say, we want to protect those people with disabilities. We want to put them with their friends in the sheltered workshops and we want to keep them from the community so that they're not hurt and they don't uh, fail. If you put them in the community with a job, they might get fired and that will hurt their self-esteem. No. And then the other side is saying, we should put them in the community so they can be successful and feel the joy of working and meet people and, and experience life to the fullest. They hear those arguments from both sides and they don't know who to believe. And in the end, uh, the language of politicians, whether it's in Sweden or in the United States, is economics. You can only do so much with the money that you have and they want to see the outcomes. And that's why I think they enjoy talking to me. But I, I don't even bring up that stuff just because one, I can't quantify it and I can't back it up with any numbers. But two, they kind of roll their eyes. They go, oh yes, you know, happiness. Yeah. If, if, a, if a person wants to facilitate happiness, politics is probably the last job they should go into. Yeah. You never know what's happy about politicians. It's like going to the dentist. I mean, it's, you know. um, so I, I don't even talk to them about that. And I think they actually appreciate it because that's all they intend to hear about. I, I pull up a, a, a computer, I open up my head, and I say, what do you want to know? And they say, well, how much does it cost to do this? And here it is. You look at it. Well, what kind of people are you working with? Here you go. And so I, I you know, that's what they seem to be in, enjoying. That's what they seem to enjoy. Any more questions? Yeah. Well, then I should say one final question, ask one final question. Because when I talk with our big companies, yeah. so they have these top executives that you want to train and so they could, should become better managers and could make their much more profits and everything. Uh, they tend to develop their leaders by telling them that, well, we focus on your good sides and your, all your abilities. And then you have bad sides and you have things that you need to work on, but don't focus on, on them. You, you should focus on the ability and what you can actually can do. Uh, and this is a central philosophy in many um, management programs that is directed to the top executives. But it's also so true for everyone, and especially when you have a lower working capacity, maybe in some areas, when you really focus on the ability, then things really happen. So what is your reflections on that? Well, I, I think it's very true. And there's an expression that we use in the United States, um, accentuate the positive and minimize the negative. We focus on the positive and you go with that. I mean, there's going to be certain negatives to certain things. I, I, have, I teach and I do research and I do other types of things. Uh, I'm a far better writer than I am a presenter. I'm not very good at this kind of thing, but you try to balance it out with the research. So you try to balance your negatives with all your positives and you give the people that you're working with as many opportunities to do the positives as you can. 
and that's what, maybe there's one part of the job that they don't like or they're not very good at, but you still try to work with the positives because you can't make everybody perfect. And I think that's, that's the problem. We try to make everybody be able to do everything brilliantly. It doesn't work that way, but they can do something really well and you focus on that. And if they do something that, that's not so good, well, hopefully all the good stuff takes care of that. There's a, there was a concept back in the 70s by Mark Gold, who he had the terminology, I forgot what it's called, but basically he said that people are willing to forgive your incompetence as much as they appreciate your success. So as goofy or as weird or as poorly as you act in public, they will forgive you as long as you have something else that you can bring to the table. So you know they're willing to forgive your your shortcomings if you have your, if your benefits outweigh those, and I think that's very true. If we kind of show people what they can do and maximize that, they forget about all the disability stuff because you're now a valuable member of the workforce, and that's beneficial. So they're tending to focus on the positive as opposed to maybe some things that you can't do. Thank you very much. Um, that was all the questions. Yes, I think so. And um, yeah. thank you very much for oh, your wonderful you. presentation. Oh, it was yeah. really inspiring. Oh, okay. And then yeah. now we will let go downstairs, and I think there will be a lot of time to uh, discuss further with you if you have questions that you want to ask uh, sure. Robert more specifically. Uh, so I let Leonard say something maybe and close the door. Okay, coming yeah. Just a little small. Thank you very much.